Again, welcome to Marine Real Talk. No, in this channel, we are sharing technical information na kung saan nagiging malaking tulong sa mga kasama nating seafarers, especially mga Filipino seafarers. Kaya kung bago pa lang sa channel na to, please don't forget to like, uh, like and subscribe para updated ka sa mga paparating pa nating videos. Okay, sabi na maraming mga seaman, mas mahirap na rin yung pagbabar ko ngayon compare before, parang mas magaan dati. Uh, dahil na rin dahil mas marami na yung regulasyon and kasama ng mga regulasyon na to in order to comply is marami na rin dumadagdag ng mga equipments or machinery on board. Is na rin to yung sock scrubber or may technical term siya na exhaust gas cleaning system or EGCS. Ngayon, actually yung sock scrubber is matagal naman na ito ay commonly gamit na to sa mga tanker vessel and some passenger vessel who are constantly trading sa emission control areas. Nga lang, pagdating ng 2020 Sulfur Cup Regulation, mas naging kilala kasi in ang sock scrubber sa uh, bulk carriers natin, uh, container vessel, river vessel, car carrier, in some other type of vessel, more than 400 gross tonnage in the bulk. Ngayon, mandatory ba yung scrubber? Actually, hindi siya mandatory. No? Isa lang itong paraan to meet the IMO 2020 uh, Global Sulfur Cup Regulation. To have a short review about this regulation, this regulation limits the sulfur emission sa atmosphere natin. Ngayon, uh, sa regulasyon, ang sinasabi na regulasyon na when the vessel is trading outside the emission control areas, dapat ma-meet niya yung uh, emission ratio, SO2 and CO2 emission ratio. Ito yung SO2 means the sulfur dioxide and CO2 means the carbon dioxide. So yung regulasyon nag-set siya ng Uh, limit values which is outside the emission control area should not exceed the 21.7 no and in order to meet this 21.7 nito kailangan ng sulfur content na gagamitin ng mga makinarya natin main engine generator at saka yung boiler natin should not exceed sa 0.5 sulfur content sa outside emission control area yon while sa loob naman ng ECA natin uh, mayroon siyang Uh, limit values na emission ratio of not more than or hindi mag exceed siya ng 4.3 uh, SO2 CO2 Ngayon in order to meet that emission ratio kailangan yung sulfur content ng fuel natin na kukonsumuhin ng main engine generator at ng boiler should not exceed sa 0.1 na sulfur content There are three means or ways in order to meet that regulation no? yung requirement ng regulation na yon. Isa lang, isa lang doon yung paggamit ng scrubber. Actually, there are three. Una yung paggamit ng compliant fuel. Pag sinabi natin compliant fuel, yung mga makinarya natin sa barko, outside emission control areas, dapat gumamit sila ng fuel na not more than 0.5 sulfur content. While sa emission control area, uh, ang dapat gamitin nila is not more than 0.1 sulfur content. Yun yung una, no? paggamit ng compliant fuel. Pangalawa is paggamit ng methanol or LNG as a fuel which is medyo mataas pa yung initial cost no kaya bibihira pa lang do meron na rin no meron na rin gumagamit karamihan sa mga tanker vessel natin pero bibihira pa rin kasi dahil sa mataas na initial cost and ang pangatlo ito is paggamit ng EGCS or ng sock scrubber okay so balikan mo natin about sock scrubber no There are kinds of scrubber. This a wet and dry scrubber. So accordingly, no, it is acknowledged na sinasabi nila na ang wet scrubber is more efficient than the dry scrubber. And yung mga scrubber natin has types. There are three types: the open loop, the closed loop, at sa kayong hybrid. Pag sinabi nating hybrid, it is the combination of open and closed loop. So sa barko, no, yung mga barko natin, uh, mostly, I, I don't know if there are some vessel na gumagamit ng dry, but uh, as far as I know is mga wet scrubber ang gamit ng mga barko natin. And most of the scrubbers then yung type is gamit nila is uh, open loop. Though in our company, we have some vessel na may hybrid siya, which is the combination of open and close. Okay, this is Alpha Laval Hybrid. EGCS exhaust gas scrubber so I'll show you on different windows now this is the global overview 
we have also the overview ng exhaust uh, section kung may kita mo rito yung mga dumpers ng main engine generators lahat ng mga machineries connected to the EGCS and we have here the jet and uh, absorber ito tinatawag na overview of scrubber the small one is called the jet and the uh, bigger one is the absorber you can see also the AGCS load 60% this is the volume of the exhaust gas passing to the scrubber system no but before na dumating sa absorber it passed through first the jet section we have also here the overview of the pump section na may kita lahat natin ng mga pumps connected for uh, to EGCS okay and we have here the overview ng circulation pump so circulation pump uh, normally running during the closed loop operation no, we have here the uh, cooler na bakit may cooler normally uh, using for the uh, closed loop nga sa meron tayong tinatawag na inlet analyzer it analyze also the pH, pH, turbidity and some others and we have here also the what we call the overview circulating tank of alkaline no dito kasi may kita natin uh, ito yung mga chemicals natin na ginagamit for uh, closed loop but since most of the vessel is using the open loop uh, let's discuss now let's share about the open loop scrubber okay so yung scrubber kasi is designed to remove the harmful substances or yung uh, remove the socks now from the exhaust gases galing sa main engine generator at ng boiler okay there are some designs na yung boiler hindi kasama sa, kwan, sa scrubber system just only the main engine and generator but there are some designs na ini-include naman nila o included yung, kwan, yung boiler sa system Okay, so yung scrubber is designed to remove the socks no, from the excess gases from main engine generator at saka ng boiler. And also some uh, harmful uh, elements, particular, uh, particulate matters. Kasi yung socks emission, it affects yung environment and even yung human health natin. So the IMO 2020 Global Sulfur Cup Regulation, it limits the emission of the sulfur. Uh, by using the compliant fuel nga or either ng metal or sa fuel or yung sock scrubber okay so paano ba ngayon uh, na nalilinis no how does it works so from the word scrubbing no it is the other uh, meaning of cleaning or removing no so meaning to say ini scrub niya lang nililinis niya lang yung socks no bago siya uh, lumabas papunta ng atmosphere no uh, labas ng funnel okay o paano na o paano nalilinis yung kana yon yung socks na yon by the way socks is the sulfur oxide no uh, wag kayong malito no about the sulfur oxide and sulfur dioxide actually uh, SO2 or sulfur dioxide is a, uh, the common uh, sulfur oxide marami kasing sulfur oxide SO2, SO3, no, iba-ibang uh, sulfur. But on board, using the biofuel, the most common sulfur oxide is the sulfur dioxide, which is uh, which can be produced through the sulfur combustion process. How the sulfur combustion process? Yung fuel kasi natin containing a sulfur. So during the combustion ng mga makinarya natin, either of burning ng fuel, maring sa boiler, sa generator, sa main engine, Yung burning na yon, yung combustion na yon is called the, uh, the sulfur combustion process. How does it works? Paano ba na lilinis yung SO2 na yon through scrubber? Okay. Yung excess gas na uh, yung excess gases uh, from main engine generator or from boiler will pass through the scrubber tower, no? So ngayon that excess that excess gas is containing the sulfur uh, dioxide. Ngayon, when the sulfur dioxide touch, kasi sa, sa taas ng scrubber tower, it has the nozzle no, uh, may spray ng seawater. By the way, para sa open loop, ang gamit na scrubbing uh, element or, or scrubbing element is seawater. Or yung closed loop naman is uh, fresh water. Okay, uh, going back to uh, open loop.
when the excess gas now coming from the engine uh, main engine generator and boiler it will pass through the scrubber tower ngayon magi spray ngayon from the scrubber mula sa taas in a downstream yung find the spray ng seawater when the sulfur oxide touch the water it will easily react no madaling mag-react yung sulfur oxide uh, sulfur dioxide or even sulfur oxide when it touches the water it will easily dissolve in and it forms to sulfuric acid okay so ngayon dahil marami yung kaya yung spray na yon a fine spray a volume of fine spray nalilinis na ngayon yung uh, yung sulfur oxide na yon kumakapit na sa tubig o yung sa seawater it forms sa uh, sulfuric acid so yung natitirang gases na lalapas ng chimney ng barko very less na very minimal na yung sulfur uh, emission niya so mamimit niya na yung uh, requirement ng IMO 2020 uh, sulfur cap regulation ngayon ang tanong ng ilan no uh, malinis mo ngayon atmosphere ala ka na nga sulfur emission or very minimal na yung sulfur emission mo eh how about the acid no kasi ang sabi natin kanina when the sulfur oxide touches yung seawater natin it will easily dissolve and it forms a sulfuric acid so meaning to say yung tubig na yon uh, na lalabas mula sa scrubber natin is acidic na siya okay the reason why sa open loop natin ang gamit ay seawater it's because naturally yung seawater natin is mataas ang alkalinity niya no and that alkalinity has ability to neutralize acid. Kung mapapansin nyo, no, sa mga may kasama, sa mga kasama natin na now they are on board or had an experience with the scrubber, mapapansin nyo, yung pH nung ka natin, nung inlet na si water natin is uh, roughly about 7 point something, no, to 8, uh, 7.5 to about 8.4 or Kasi the normal or the average pH ng seawater natin is about 8.1. So halimbawa sabihin natin 8.1 yung inlet na pH ng seawater natin. Ngayon, uh, paglabas niya, mapapansin nyo yung wash water natin mababa na. No? Yung iba is nasa 6 na lang or 5 or 3. It depends pa rin doon sa, sa alkalinity ng seawater. Hindi uh, sa dagat kasi hindi pare-pareho yung alkalinity of course even sa Balt sa Baltic kasi mas mababa na no mas mababa yung alkalinity so definitely kung mababa yung alkalinity ng seawater uh, mas mahina siya to neutralize the acid so kung mapapansin niyo halimbawa the vessel is trading in the Baltic uh, Sea and using the AGCS kung halim yung yung wash water pH natin mapapansin niyo mas mababa siya sometimes 4 na lang siya or 4 point something not unlike andun tayo sa ibang part ng ocean no which is may kita mo kung halimbawa 8.1 yung inlet ng seawater o yung inlet pH ng seawater uh, sometimes is yung wash water natin is still about 6 point something no mataas pa rin ibig sabihin na neutralize talaga ng uh, seawater yung acid no from the sulfur oxide so there are some question bakit hindi natin pwedeng gamitin yung scrubber natin yung sock scrubber natin sa mga fresh water estuaries or even do sa mga lugar na nagsasalubong yung uh, tubig alat tsaka yung fresh water at tsaka yung sea water. It's because masyadong mababa yung alkalinity sa lugar na yon or sa fresh water naman alam naman natin no uh, wala or kung meron man it's very very minimal it's not sufficient enough to neutralize the sulfuric acid. Uh, ano yung advantages tsaka disadvantages ng mayroong scrubber? Actually, yung scrubber kasi is decision niya ng uh, ship owner na whether ang gusto nila is gumamit na ng compliant fuel or mag-install ng scrubber or either yung makina, niya, yung makina is gumamit ng fuel na methanol or LNG. May mga advantages tsaka disadvantages. Ang sabi na ilang, uh, it, it is more easy at hindi ganun ka-complicated kung mag sila na compliant fuel na lang. Mas less hassle. Less hassle sa owner, less hassle din sa mga crew. So, nga lang, ang kaakibat nun, mas mataas yung presyo ng compliant fuel no? compared dun sa high sulfur. 
Kasi kapag uh, gumagamit ka ng scrubber, ang ginagamit mong fuel dito is yung high sulfur, no? Hindi sa yung VLSFO. So comparing the price, comparing the price of VLSFO at saka no high sulfur, actually merong malaking diferensya. Eh paano kung yung vessel natin, sa so, sa tanker is VLCC or sa bulk natin is cape size. Halimbawa sa cape size, they are consuming of more than uh, 30 metric tons. Imagine mo na lang, kung halimbawa ang price difference ng bunker mo, uh, high sulfur at saka loose sulfur is about 300 or even 200 dollars na lang. 200 dollars times 30. Kung halimbawa 30 na lang yung konsumo ng mukha ng barko nyo. So, ibig sabihin meron siyang 6,000. In just only one day, there's a price difference of 6,000 dollars. Kung halimbawa yung barko mo is a continuously running in one month. So, i-multiply mo na lang kung kaano kalaki. So, yun yung natitipid nila. But of course, uh, having an scrubber is just like an investment para sa mga may-ari ng barko. While sa paggamit naman ng methanol at saka LNG as a fuel, the initial cost is really too high. Now, it's really too high. The reason why... Uh, some uh, owner hindi ito immediate na consider but later on uh, marami ng owners na consider na rin nila ito in order to meet the requirement ng regulation actually sa sock scrubber natin uh, maraming maker tayo no? merong mga may Alpalabal, may Fuji Electric, Wartzilla Mitsubishi, Pan Asia uh, Finmarine and many more Ngayon, may, nag, may nagtatanong minsan no, uh, which among those yung mas maganda raw or user friendly. Based on my observation, there are some na yes, mas madali siyang i-operate uh, user friendly. Ang EGCS ba is pwedeng gamitin sa ECA o Emission Control Area? Minsan may natatanong ako, their answer is hindi daw. No? Actually, pwede po. Kaya nga kung mapapansin nyo, Yung mga scrubber natin, yung EGCS natin, is mayroon siyang selection mode. May selection mode siya, different maker kasi has a different terminology. Now, in some, is, uh, yung, ECA, yung ECA mode nila is ECA or SECA. Or sa iba naman, is 0.1 sulfur content. Okay, or 0.1%. Uh, yung iba naman, ang gamit nila sa 0.5 is uh, 0.5 or global. Meaning to say, that is the mode outside the emission control area. Ngayon, halimbawa, vessel will be entering sa emission control area. Papalitan lang yan ng mode. Si select mo lang sa touch panel yung mode ng 0.1 or ECA or SECA depending kung ano yung, kan, yung terminologies na ginamit ng si scrubber. Halimbawa, isi-set mo siya sa SECA mode. Automatically, ano, uh, imimit ngayon ng system yung uh, emission Ratio. Remember yung sinabi ko kanina, no? uh, the IMO 2020 Sulfur Cup Regulation has the emission ratio. Kapag isinet mo na siya sa 0.1, dapat kailangan niyang mamit yung 4.3 no? SO2CO2. Then paano ba malalaman yung SO2CO2 ratio? Just simply divide kung ano yung value ng SO2, i-divide mo lang yung CO2. No? SO2 means the uh, sulfur dioxide and CO2 means the carbon dioxide. So, kapag i-divide mo na siya, yung ratio niya dapat hindi tumaas ng 4.3. Ngayon, once you set the mode to ECA or SECA or 0.1, whatever yung terminology ng maker na yon, okay, automatically, yung uh, volume of water ng spray, no, yung mga pump kasi natin is inverter type. No? Kapag pag, uh, tumataas yung volume ng pan, ng uh, excess gases, let's say nag increase ng load, yung main engine or yung generator so dumadami yung volume ng excess gases passing to the scrubber tower automatically nagka-adjust yung ibin yung seawater pump natin yung feed pump to spray more water no to scrub kasi mas marami na yung volume ng excess gas ngayon when you select yung 0.1 or ECA mode doon sa EGCS natin o sa EGCS nyo automatically rin para ma-meet yung emission ratio kailangan magdagdag ng mas maraming volume of seawater to scrub no to clean to remove the sulfur oxide from the excess gases so ganun lang siya no ganun lang siya ka simple then paglabas ulit ng ECA 
ipintot mo lang muli yung global mode or yung 0.5 ng sulfur. So, ibig sabihin, pwedeng gamitin yung uh, yung EGCS in a ICA or pwedeng gamitin yung EGCS sa uh, emission control areas. Nowadays, no, paparamihan ng paparamihan ngayon mga bansa that they prohibit to use the uh, open loop sa mga puerto nila or sa mga territorial waters nila. So the best thing is the master should ask the local agent no kung ano man yung uh yung regulation no ano yung rule lo local rule kasi there are some countries na still uh, under the deliberation so ang best way is yung master kailangan niyang i-ask yung local agent para sabihin na uh, pwede ba kaming gumamit though still so many countries that may allow to use the scrubber even in port at saka sa territorial waters nila The question is, what if nag-fail ngayon yung kan mo, yung scrubber mo? So, hindi kaya ng restore Actually, meron tayong contingency measure that is as per rule. Na just in case nagkaroon ka ng scrubber breakdown and you cannot be restored sa loob ng isang oras, then you have to change uh, the consumption into compliant fuel. And of course, uh, A master should report it to the company, the flag, and to the uh, authorities. So, may mga proseso na gagawin. So, may kipag-coordinate na si Kapitan sa technical manager or sa owner what needs to do. Ano yung mga rectification plan na kailangan. Ngayon, in kaso na hindi talaga kaya ma-rectify, tapos hindi sufficient na ngayon yung kung mo compliant fuel mo. No? Eh, ang natitira na lang yung high sulfur. Okay, ang ginagawa ng fan ng mga manager is uh, they are seeking or obtaining yung flag dispensation. So, they're asking ng authorization to use the high sulfur until uh, makarating sila doon sa calling port wherein uh, darating yung spare para ma-rectify or either mag-bunker ng loose sulfur uh, uh, fuel, yung compliant fuel. Ngayon, if worse comes to worse scenario, sabihin natin, okay, uh, hindi talaga available yung kan, yung technician, walang spare na may padala. And unfortunately, in that calling port is alating available na compliant fuel. And doon papasok na ngayon yung tinatawag nating uh, FONAR. No? So, it is a kind of letter statement para sa non-availability ng a compliant fuel. So, Thank you for watching. I hope na nakapagdagdag tayo ng kahit kunting kaalaman na naman sa mga kasama nating seaman. No? If kung nagustuhan nyo, just please uh, like and share yung video na to. And syempre sa mga nanonood na hindi pa nakasubscribe, please subscribe para sa mga susunod pa nating mga videos. Pwede rin po kayo mag-comment. No? If you have some comment or question na maaaring makatulong ako, then just comment down below. Again, thank you and God bless us all.